All right, guys, just kind of coming into it. Basically, uh, about 15, 20 years ago or so, uh, a group of guys, a group of nerds, really, um, started kind of figuring out and, and got like a bunch of natural guys and just was, they kind of used the scientific method and backwards engineered the way that they were with women and the why, why they got the results they got. And then this whole seduction community kind of came about, started back. Well, how long ago was uh, Ross Jeffrey? 15, 20 years now? It's like 88 years. Yeah, 88. Mm -hmm. And then um, other gurus started kind of rising up. Mystery showed up, which is what we're going to be talking about today. And uh, this method now is actually 15 years old. The game's kind of changed since then. But um, yeah, we're not actually going to go over routines and stuff like that. I'm actually going to just take you through the phases of human courtship. One of the, basically, the steps from meeting the woman and then all the way to beginning a sexual relationship. Right? We're going to go into what happens in between. Like, what did you do from the time that you made that initial eye contact that you said, you know, hi, my name's Joe, all the way to penetration. So that's where we're going to go today. So I got a question for you guys first. Do you guys carry condoms? I do. One? Mm -hmm. Two? In the car? Yeah, not tonight, but I usually do. In the car? Three? In a nice little wooden box. <laughs> So, what about you guys? Uh, I got at home. home? <laughs> Dog ate my homework. Um, yeah. When you guys don't go out with a condom, you're saying not only to the girl but to yourself that you're not actually going to believe that it's going to happen. So, homework for tonight, condom in the left pocket when you go out. I'll touch you why later. But uh, don't leave them in your wallet too long or they end up like this. Every two weeks, swap. So. Let's begin. Yeah, if you win a prize, you have to answer questions. I'm here to help you guys out. <laughs> Alright, so this is the M3 model. This is basically going to go over the three larger phases in human courtship, all the way from the attraction phase, which is the pickup, the comfort phase, which is your mid game, and then the seduction phase, which is your in game. And in between, there's going to be little jumps, moves, bounces, and times bridges. We're going to go over all that. So I'm going to come back to this in a second. We're going to start with the beginning. So basically, this will be my book report off of the mystery method. Has anyone not read this book? One, two, three, four. I haven't read all of it. Five. So this is pretty much the Bible for the uh, seduction community. And it's going to come off the principle, if any of you guys have kind of religious beliefs, this might kind of uh, really conflict with them. So it comes off of the, uh, a lot of this is going to come from like evolutionary psychology, biology, coming to the fact of that we are biological machines. And our purpose on this planet is to survive and replicate. The entire purpose of your body, the reason you have legs, is to move you from point A to your target. The problem is you have 28,251 days to make this happen. Otherwise, nature will unapologetically weed your genes out of existence. You don't want to be the weakest link. Basically, like, the last 40,000 years, every one of your ancestors found a way to get some ass. And now, there's a group of us guys trying to figure this out, like, how do we get this happening? So, basically, what this... Uh, program that I've kind of created here is going to give you an accelerated learning curve. Now, so I want you to begin when you go out to start thinking of the world as like a gigantic global mating ritual. Everything you see is just an act of human courtship. The reason you have your job, the reason you have your friends, the reason like you worked overtime to buy that brand new Benz is all just an act of to demonstrate value and convey yourself so that you can attract a mate. Do you guys kind of see that, the way that that works? When you knew you had rent, but you spent every last fucking dollar on your car, because you're thinking like, God, I'm going to put rims on this bitch, I'm going to get laid. You guys ever have that feeling? So, uh, when we break it down further, we start seeing there's only three types of social cues, the way humans interact, in terms of indicators of interest versus indicators of disinterest. Not necessarily sexual, but 
indicate uh, demonstrations of higher value versus demonstrations of lower value, and then compliance testing, which can either be complied with or defied. And we're going to go into each one really deep right here. I'm going to start with indicators of interest. You guys ever heard of this term before? So out in the field, we're going to be looking for something called IOIs, indicators of interest. Something like uh, she's talking to you, and her foot's pace facing towards you, and she's kind of stroking her glass. Or she gives you a hair toss. Or she licks her lips. She looks at your crotch. All those are indicators of interest. And when you calibrate so that you can actually... You're going to be multitasking here. You're going to be running your routines, running your gamuts, talking to her. But at the same time, you're going to be looking for these IOIs. And if you see three IOIs, you can pretty much go for the kiss. In fact, when you get really good, you're going to be opening doors kissing them. So. The opposite of that is indicators of disinterest. She's kind of turning off. She's not really paying attention to you. If you're talking to her, you make a joke, and everyone laughs. She's not laughing. Right? You just start, you're going to start noticing those all the time. So you just want to calibrate your behavior. Whenever you get an IOD from a girl, and you want to roll off and like punish her for bad behavior. If she's not paying attention to you, she's not giving you IOIs, you say a joke, and she doesn't really laugh, you kind of give her an IOD back. You're going to say something like, you couldn't handle me anyway. And you punish her with like negative body language. You're going to start dog training her into like treating you the way that you want to be treated. So demonstrations of higher value. That could be anything. That could be you letting her know that you own a club, that you're a rock star, that you're a CEO. Not even in that. That you, uh, even the fact that you have a job or that you can provide for her. Any kind of... Uh, when I say, like, he's a personal trainer, demonstration of higher value, right? If I told you, hey, guys, let me, uh, let me teach you how to uh, lift weights, you might not really respond to me, right? Because I don't have any kind of credential. But if I say, like, hey, Joe over here is a personal trainer, don't you have, like, that much more uh, willingness to like, kind of listen to what he's got to say after that? It's because I've uploaded some of his value into your head. And basically... That's kind of what we're doing to the women. We're going to learn how to convey and upload your value into her head very quickly. So that's the point of pickup altogether. Right? You only have two to three minutes to convey your value and your personality to that woman. And then she's gone. If you can do it fast enough, you're going to number close. You're, you're going to be making out with her. You're going to take her home. If you don't do it fast enough, she's going to walk. Demonstrations of lower value. Anything that's commi uh, communicating lower value to her. Uh, you start talking to her and she says, um, you know, pick me up at 8 and you tell her like, oh, I don't have a car. Your value just dropped, right? Compliance testing. Can you hold that for a second? <laughs> That's a compliance test. Did he comply or defy? He didn't have to comply. He could have been like, no, fuck you. <laughs> just like when I tell a girl in the club, hey, give me a high five. She can comply or defy. If she complies, give me a high five. I want to reward her, right? I'm going to say, very nice. I might want to spin her around. Ah, oh, beautiful. If she doesn't want a high five, she's like this. Like, never mind. Blow her off. That's perfect. You're going to hear uh, Kino, short for kinesthetic, which means touch a lot in the field. Anything from a high five, a handshake, all the way to penetration. All levels of Kino. And what you're going to do... Uh, you ever go on a date, we call them like AFC dates, when you, you take the girl out to the nice dinner, you go dancing, and you go to the movies, and then at the end of the night, you got to make that big move for that big kiss. It feels kind of, there's too much pressure on it, right? Because you haven't been raising your levels of keno the whole time. Now, if you start by opening the girl with high fives, giving her little props, telling her to blow it up, and being fun, playful, lots of touches, when it comes to that time that you have to kiss her, it's not going to be a big moment. It's going to happen naturally. Can you see how that would happen? So, the Venusian artist's mission statement is to, as a man, present yourself in the best possible light and allow the woman the opportunity to choose. We as men court, women choose, but we don't chase. If you chase, that's showing needy behavior. So she can be like, oh, this guy wants me. I'm the prize. I'm on the pedestal. Next. She's going to go on to the next challenge. So, 
How do you go from a woman? How do you go from meeting a woman to having sex with her? There's three phases: the attraction phase, the comfort phase, and the seduction phase. Now, if we take a magnifying glass and we zoom in, we're actually going to see there's nine phases in between these three phases. So this game is nine levels, just like Mario Brothers. The attraction phase plus the comfort phase is going to equal the seduction phase. If you do it out of order, you're going to fall off, and I'm going to show you why. Let's start with the player. The player is this guy that's walking up, and he says, Hey, baby, what's your sign? Right away. She knows exactly what you want. She's like, this guy's creepy. She's going to write you off. See, he went straight from A1, which is the open, into trying to seduce her without building any kind of comfort. She's not comfortable with him. You do it the other way, and you open her up, and you become the nice guy, saying, Hi, I'm Ryan. Can I buy you a drink? You're basically saying, Can, uh, can I buy your attention, your affection, your approval? And again, she says, thanks, I'll take your drink, chump. She'll take your drink, and she'll write you off. And then you go to her to kiss her, and she says, whoa, but I thought we were friends. So you don't want to fall into that frame either, because then you're just a bitch. After she turns you down, she's going to hand you her purse and say, can you watch this for me and my girlfriend go to the bathroom? So, basically the nice guy is like, you're wearing a social mask. You're not actually projecting who you really are. You're kind of playing this, this nice guy just to get in her pants. You guys ever done that before? I have. <laughs> Never. We all have. Never. No, that's the I love your honesty. Never the nice guy. So, during the courtship phase, there's going to be types of location changes. You can't go up to the girl in the vegetable aisle and stick your dick in her right there. You know, you're going to actually have to move her to different places. A lot of venue changes are going to... You might meet her in the bar, and then you're going to say, hey, let's go to breakfast. You end up at Denny's. From Denny's, you end up back at her house. But in between Denny's and her house, you were riding in the car. To get to her bedroom, you had to go through her living room. So logistics is uh, going to be a big key to this uh, process. So there's three types of jumps. There's the move, the bounce, and the time bridge. So I'm going to go through these right now. First thing, when you're on your open, you might be talking to the girl. You're going to say something like, whatever. Hey, my name's Ryan. What are you drinking? Chocolate block. I, I can't hear you. Come over here. You're going to take her hand, you're going to pull her away. Even five to eight <laughs> feet. At least so you start moving her around. So not only are you actually physically escalating, but now her brain sees you in two different places. I've been here with her, but now she has a memory with me here. And I'm going to move her again. Then I'm going to say, like, you know, me and my friends are going across the street for pizza. You're going to move her there. Now, if I end up, if, if I just meet you here, and then I say, let's go to the restaurant across the street and then we come in together, there's kind of a different dynamic there, right? Because now we would be a couple, you know what I'm saying? The whole frame is kind of changed. So that's the, that's the move and the bounce. The time bridge is when I meet the girl, I'm at the bar, we're hanging out, we're hanging out, we're hanging out, bam. We both got to go to work tomorrow. So I can't actually bounce her to go somewhere else. I can't get her back to her house, I can't get her out for dinner or whatever. So I'm going to have to create a time bridge. I'm going to bridge the gap of time. That's where I'm going to get her number, her Facebook. And I'm not just going to say, give me your number, 702, blah, blah, blah. And then, okay, thanks, see ya. I'm actually going to create a bridge. I'm going to say something like, you know, we're actually having a barbecue next Tuesday. You and your girlfriend should come. Uh, we might need a wild card. What's, are you 702? What's the rest? So now I actually have a date locked in where I'm actually going to see her again. And then in between the time bridge, I can sit there and I am her on Facebook. I can give her a call and just say like, Hey, what's going on? I'm kind of busy, but you know, I want to hang out. There's this party coming. There never has to be a barbecue. In fact, with me, there's always a fictitious <laughs> barbecue every time. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I think I asked Michelle to the barbecue. You know, there's, there's no barbecue, but as long as she's going to lock in, she's going to give you some kind of like commitment. That's what you're looking for. And then when it comes time to actually call her, it, well, at that time, you kind of really do want to have something going on, which is why we have this group. You know, when we bond together as like a brotherhood, and Maz hits me up and he's like, dude, 
I need a barbecue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then all of a sudden there's going to be some kind of meetup. Like, there's a barbecue in two hours. We need everyone here. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, and we're there to give you that, basically that, that all value. of us we're kind of team up together and upload barbecue. his value quicker. <laughs> <laughs> so actually have barbecues all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we forgot to tell you guys. Okay, so we're gonna zoom into the face now. So let's start with the attraction face. You're gonna start with the open. The man approaches a set, runs an opener, and earns a set's acceptance. At this point, you're looking for the hook point, the point where they actually like have gained value having known you. Yeah. Do you guys know have you ever used any openers? Hi. <laughs> Hi. Cool. What do you think? Um, tattoo openers. What do you think about girls with tattoos, opinion openers? Cool. Things like that. Yeah. You Once you were there. <laughs> he used my island opener. Cool. The tattoo openers There was a couple different types of openers. There's a what we call direct opener where you're instantly telegraphing interest, I think you're absolutely adorable. I had to come over and meet you, right? Uh, Mystery Method does more indirect, where you might uh, walk up, come kind of over the shoulder, and just uh, obliquely spit out. Did you guys see that fight outside? Oh my God, right? Uh, where basically you're not telegraphing any interest, but you're conveying your personality. You're gonna say certain scripted routines that's gonna make her laugh at certain times, demonstrating that you're confident, you're funny, humorous, right? And then when you do give her kind of a statement of intent, she's already feeling attraction for you because she's actually known you for a little while. Opinion openers. Uh, oblique openers, something like if you go up and uh, do karaoke or you're playing guitar on stage, open mic, where she hasn't actually talked to you, but now she's seen like, this guy's artistic, this guy's cool, he's talented, so she's already feeling attraction. And when you come in, you have a warm approach because she already knows of you. So when you come up and you just say hi, she's already like, oh my God, I loved your show. You got her in the bag. So uh, third party, that's uh, AI. That's where I'll go into the set first and I'll start bullshitting with Mads' target where he said like, I want to talk to that blonde. I'll go in and I'll say something like, yeah, I'm just over here, you know, I'm partying with uh, my buddy, uh, DJ Mazin, and you know, and she's like, oh my God, really? And I'll say something like, you know, he's, it, it's fucking awesome because he's always out in the studio working on his demo, right? I'm uploading his value. I'm like, and then, you know, he just like, he just finally broke up with his girlfriend, pre-selection. So now we're, uh, we're actually just uh, out here partying and chilling, having a couple of beers. Here, I'll introduce you if you promise not to embarrass me. So Again, I'll, I'm putting out some value. I'm uploading his value. And then when he comes in, she's like, oh, so you're a DJ. Oh, my God. Look what kind of music you like. Uh, and then a digital opener where uh, you guys, uh, I, I know you guys never hang out on, on MySpace, you know, looking for those uh, those young ones. IMs, emails. Okay. Have you guys ever heard of the Bit Shield? I'm sure you guys have encountered it. You ever, uh, <laughs> you ever go out trying to meet <laughs> women? <laughs> you ever go out trying to meet women? And um, at the end of the night, you kind of end up saying that same thing. Everyone's just like, did you score? And you're like, no, they were all stuck up. Like she's not a bitch, guys. She's just a bitch when you're around. Because you don't know how to display that value. See, every time you hit her with these gifts and compliments and nice things, it's just it's, she's just getting that shield. She's going to blow you off. But if you fucking hit her where it counts, then you can break through. It's kind of like, you guys are watching Independence Day? So you want to like <laughs> upload that virus and break down the shields. Okay, so the hook point. After you open the target, uh, hey, my name is Ryan, blah, blah, blah. And we get to kind of talk, and you're going to kind of notice this point where, well, i got to get back to my friends in a second. You'll actually try to leave, and then they will reinitiate the chat. They're actually hooking you back in. So once you get to that point, you know some kind of attraction has been built. Because if it wasn't, she would have just been like, okay, cool, and she'll roll off. So once you get to that point, you're clear to move in to A2, which is the female to male attract phase. At that point, you're going to continue demonstrating higher value, building the attraction with her, so that when it comes time to A3, which is the reversal of A2, then you can actually, she's going to be attracted, and you can qualify her for a legitimate reason. Uh, I got a question for you. What about, uh, do you have to assume the hook point, though, at some time, sometimes? No, you'll feel it. 
Like you'll literally, you'll literally be talking. You're kind of body rocking out. Uh, yeah, I gotta go in a second. But blah blah blah. And then he'll, they'll actually keep talking. You will, you will feel them pulling you. It's, it's kind of a weird phenomenon. I've even done it in. He saw me do it in the elevator shit. Like I was trying to go out the elevator. And she pulled me down. I went down to like the next floor with them. Go down. Uh, so, on this one. Uh, I didn't actually just go up straight to this girl and just start bullshitting with her. I did, but only after uh, I had everyone kind of bring me up, and I'm already demonstrating like that I was pre-selected by women. I actually already number closed another girl that night, I ended up hooking up with a model that night, and then kind of like we we were doing this weird event where I put all these challenges in my hat. So like you would put in like five bucks, and then you would draw something out of my hat, and it might say like, "Open up the girl with the opener." Do you know why you suck? And like basically, like you have to you have to come up with something like that and actually hook the set. If you hook the set, you get your five bucks back. But if you like bitch out, then we keep the five bucks and it goes to the bar. <laughs> um, but it's fun. Uh, anyway, so I was already conveying here, leader of men, plus uh, pre-selected by other women. So when I actually went into I initiated a chat with this girl, like it went really quick. The number was there. I spun around and then I left. Unfortunately, Maz didn't see when I did that, and then he went up and used the exact same opener, <laughs> did the exact same spin. And as she spun around, she looked right at me. <laughs> What's going on here? But it's cool. We're still friends today, actually. Okay, so if we zoom in from the woman's perspective, right? You're coming here. Uh, she's, she's seeing herself as higher value than you. So when you walk in the bar as just a dude, like no matter how cool you look, you feel like you're pimped out, you've got fucking brand new Gucci shades on, but she just sees you as like the way we see a fat chick walking in the bar. Now, what's gonna happen when we start throwing nags and demonstrating higher value is it's like that fat chick loses like 10 pounds every time she opens her mouth. So your value starts going up. And by you throwing nags, you're breaking her self-esteem, you're starting to bring down her perceived value of herself. And then she's going to want to re uh, assert her value to you. So, in A1, you come in, regular guy. She's like the hot, the HB. So, you start raising your value. Okay? She's so like, this guy's dressed well, he's got good body language, he's not needy, he's interesting. Your value starts going up. Now, all of a sudden, I'm still talking to her, but I've got other women touching me, pre selection. Uh, I'm sitting here, she's trying to get my attention, and uh, I'm making fun of her, you know, hey, nice nails, are they real? And she says no, and I say, oh, well, they're still nice. Anyway, blah, 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 right? So her value started to go down. So she says, wait a minute, this is different. Guys don't act like this to me. I'm a fucking hot babe. I get anything I want. Guys buy me drinks, I walk all over them. Why is, what's different about this guy? So then she's gonna start actually DHVing to you. You're going to say something like, are you the type of girl I should get to know? What's interesting about you? What's the most uh, adventurous thing you've ever done? She's going to start qualifying herself. She's going to start saying, well, I go to school. I've been skydiving. I've done this. If, you, if she starts qualifying to you, then you kind of know you're in A3 at that point. And you'll actually be able to move her to say, like, you know what? There's something interesting about you. Come with me. You know? And then you can sit down and actually go into the comfort phase. Let's see. Every time she... Um, at that point, you're uh, you're going to uh, give her IOIs for the for the demonstrations of higher value that she's been giving you. If she says something like, "I'm going to med school and I'm going to be a nurse," like you're going to reward her for that because she's qualifying herself. And then you're going to say something like, "Oh my God, that's awesome! You know, what? I I used to date a nurse. I don't know if I can even talk to you now, but uh, so th th you're really trying to get in the medical field. You must, you know, you must be smart. You must have a brain." Uh, how can we make this happen for you? You know, so you want to encourage her to keep uh, qualifying herself to you. Anyway, at that point, they're going to feel like you guys have mutual respect for each other. And then, then you can turn off the game and actually just be you, sit there and have a normal conversation on a deeper level. <laughs> okay, so neg theory. You guys ever heard of negs? Anybody not? Cool. So a neg is a statement basically or an action that's going to temporarily disqualify you as being considered a potential suitor by her. You're going to say something that a normal guy wouldn't say that's trying to hook up with her. Every other guy is like trying to kiss her ass. He's like trying to buy her a drink. He's trying to be nice to her. And if you're like blowing her off, if you're like, you say something, you walk up to her and uh, 
you're on the dance floor and you dance and you kind of come down like this and you come up and you step back and you go, you didn't shave your legs today, did you? It's cool, we're all human. You say something like that where she's like, why is this guy talking to me like that? Or she walks up to you and you let a look at her and go, can I get some space or stand on my cock? So she's going to be like, whoa, something's different about this guy. i got to start pushing his buttons because also she wants to break you down to reaffirm to herself that she has the power. So the secret behind negs, or uh, cocky funny humor, as David Deese calls it, is uh, basically you're inducing uh, endorphins such as dopamine and oxytocin into the girl's brain, which are addictive chemicals. So by flushing her brain with these chemicals, making her laugh, you're basically you're provoking her in a fun, challenging way, and ultimately you become irresistible to you because she starts like physically cycling for those cravings. She's like, this guy can feed me the emotions that I want. It doesn't matter like. Uh, what you physically have, what you physically look like, all these are like limiting beliefs, you know. It's these, you can start feeding her the emotions that she needs. She starts craving. She'll keep coming back for more. So. Before we move on, I have a question yeah. about the name theory. For sure. Um, something I've always just kind of wondered about with that. Like, has the whole, um, you know, pickup artist thing just become so big that women see that so much that they know what you're doing? No. <laughs> I've been called out a couple times, and the reaction kind of weird. Like, have you ever heard of like peacocking, yeah. where you wear like really outlandish clothes trying to get attention? Oh, okay. They'll actually come up and they'll be like, "Are you peacocking?" And you'll be like, "Yeah, it works, right?" And they're like, "Yeah." It does. <laughs> or um, you might say a line that they've heard before, like, yeah. the, "Who lies more, men or women?" They'll call you out. They'll be like, "Wasn't that from that that show on VH1?" And you're yeah. like. Yeah, but who said it better? <laughs> so as long as you have something better to say and you don't fall into their frame, you're good to go. Okay. But if you come, if, if you say a line and then she calls you out, like she's, she's shit testing you right there. But if she says, what, were you studying the pickup artist? And you're like, yeah. And she's like, then she'll walk. Okay. So as long as you just, just go balls out okay. if that happens. I have a question. Do yeah. you have an open with an egg? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I opened her with a neck. He called me out. I'm just saying. I argued with her. I said, "Oh, you got that glitter eyeshadow on. I think you have a little too much, but everything else is perfect." See, I was a neck, but it's calibrated. So it was a compliment, but it's still kind of backhanded. But it got her attention. Baby, you want to get late tonight? <laughs> <laughs> So, Attraction <laughs> Isn't a Choice by David D. Have you guys ever uh, heard of this guy? David D. So, his theory is basically, hot girl comes into a room, right? Blonde hair, big tits, who the fuck her? Cool, right? She walks in and you as a man feel attraction for her. In the same way that a woman can't help feeling attraction for a high value man that enters the room. Guy walks in, he's a lead singer of um Red Bark from Metallic, I don't know, whatever. She feels attraction for him, right? That's like a ten in her world. Or the CEO or the uh, the restaurant owner, whatever. So and at the same time, now this hot blonde walks into the room you feel attraction for. Her. Joe can't sit there and be like, Well, she's a bitch. He can't talk me out of feeling the way that I feel for her, I just naturally feel that way. The same way that if this guy walks in and she's like, oh, he's hot, you know, I can't be like, oh, he's a jerk, he's an asshole. In fact, I'll only add fuel to the fire because if I tell her he's an asshole, she's going to even want more. So that doesn't help. Most guy, nice guys, they call them like orbiters or sponsors that hang around girls, trying to be nice and ultimately get in their pants, will sit there and, you know, he's an asshole or they'll talk you down. You can't talk her out of that. It's just attraction isn't a choice. It's just kind of hardwired into you. You're going to hear uh, this term like throughout the community over and over. It's kind of, it, it's his phrase, but it actually came out of that book. Uh, male versus female attraction circuitry. Men, we're kind of like a light switch. Hot girl walks in, light switch turns on, I want to fuck her. <laughs> it's hard. Uh, women are more like a dimmer. You got to kind of work them to get them turned on. You give them a little value, a little push-pull, back off a little more value, they, uh, they start getting turned on. But at the same time, you do one wrong thing and it's off. I don't know, their, their dimmer's broke, I don't know. Why. <laughs> anyway, but there are certain female attraction triggers that can get that dimmer to, to move up rapidly. 
and they are conveying that you're a leader of men, that you're pre-selected by other women, that you have a willingness to walk away, that you are a protector of loved ones, that you're a successful risk taker, and that you have a willingness to emote. And what you want to do in all your gamuts and routine is basically work them so that you convey these personalities without directly saying them. I can't walk up to her and be like, I got all the bitches. Because she's going to be like, okay, you're a douchebag. But um, if I give her my Facebook and she goes on and she sees women hanging all over me, then I'm conveying pre-selection, but I'm not bragging. If I'm hanging out with a female friend, she doesn't know it's a friend, but I'm uh, dancing with this girl in the bar, spinning her around. I meet these two girls and I pull them in. They look like they're gaming me. I'm now demonstrating pre-selection to the whole bar. And pre-selection or social proof is like the one that you want to hit. It works on every woman. Basically, uh, they did a psychological experiment on this where they took a male bird, they put him in a cage with like 10 female birds. All those female birds just fly around, right? They put a stuffed female bird next to that bird. Every one of those birds was on his jock. So it's not like pre-selection. It's not a mystery term. He didn't make it up. This is actually a psychological principle from like the 1920s or something. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, let's see. Do you guys have any questions on these? Um, if you guys need ways to convey these, I have many. So talk to me later. A3. So at this point, I've demonstrated higher value to the girl. She's into me. But now I want to qualify her for legitimate reasons. If I just qualify her because she's a hot bitch, then she's not going to feel validated as a person. So I might, uh, I might say something to her like this. We've gotten to talking. And uh, instead of just being like, well, OK, you like me, and you know, you're hot, so I like you, I'm going to say something like, you know, it's funny. Because I thought your first impression really sucked. Neg again. But now that I get to know you, you know, you're like a really fun and interesting person. You know, and I love the fact that you out enjoy outdoors as much as me. Uh, you're totally not the typical Vegas girl I thought you were. I, I definitely like a chance to get to know you better. I got to get back to my friends, but how can we continue this conversation? Right? So now she feels like actually validated as a person, not just a piece of ass. And that's, that's my secret in A3. Now, if I didn't create a time bridge or something like that, and it, the conversation's going good, I've already qualified her, that's where I'm going to move her you know, across the street to, for some pizza, just something quick, McDonald's, whatever. So the conversation phase, or comfort phase. Uh, C1 conversation, uh, you you're, you're kind of turn off the game now, you're just actually having a real conversation. You're connecting on a more intimate level. But as the conversation progresses, you're going to start going into like deeper and deeper co uh, topics. The physical touch is going to be starting to escalate. You'll be like kind of holding hands while you're talking. There's going to be more touching. And you're going to notice this part when it moves into connection. When you start getting on those real topics that you're really interested in and that she's really interested in. Right? Have you guys ever uh, felt that? You might, you, you'll find like, some of, some of the nerdiest stuff that, that I have, like a million into like astrophysics, I might start talking to the girl about yeah, um, you know, the meteor shower, and then she starts talking about her dream is to work for NASA, and then all of a sudden my dream will, will be for that too. <laughs> if I, um, I got some chameleon game too. But um, you, you're going to start noticing it's going to phase shift into that. Let's see. Uh, after uh, it's going to get deeper, and that's where your making out is going to uh, start. See, in the Venusian arts, we don't look at kissing as a seduction tool. It's actually a comfort building tool. I can kiss her, but I'm not going to like try to turn her on with that. I'm going to, I'm going to kiss her, and then I'm going to roll off. So anyway, what kind of music do you like? Uh, I don't really like that kind of music. I'm more into blah 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 blah. Let me see your hands. I might put it on my knee. Keep talking to her. That's why I'm going to keep escalating. At this point, you kind of know that it's on. And if then you want to move to the seduction phase. If your logistics are right, you should be able to get her away from whatever venue, back to your living room. The you know, foreplay is going to start, which is S1. Uh, you're going to get her into the bedroom. At some point, you may run into last minute resistance. Have you ever got to that point? You try to take off the girl's bra. You're making out, you're making out. You take off the bra, and then she's like, 
What are you doing? You guys ever had that? Never. Okay. I never have either. But, um, some women will run into this point where like they're making out, they were, they were enjoying it, but then when you went for the bra, they're like... So, do you guys have really bad approach anxiety? So an A1 on the approach anxiety. This is the mere opposite for the female. Basically, 40,000 years ago, we lived in these tribes of like 50 people. So, if you say this, this girl, let's say there's 50 people, 25 guys, 25 girls. Now, five of those girls, are, they're too old. Five of them are too young. Five are already taken. There's only, and if you're really picky, there's like two or three that you can go for. And if you go for her and you don't get her, she's going to go tell the rest of the tribe, like, this guy's a douchebag, don't talk to him. And you're basically committing genetic suicide. If you do get her and she's connected to the tribal leader or one of the tribal leader's friends, then they're going to drag you out in the woods and, and smash you over the rock. So you're going to die anyway. So it's hardwired into us on that approach. That's why we kind of like, I want to talk to her. <gasps> My God, she's hot. I want to fuck <gasps> stuff, right? So in the mirror opposite, in, in S2 here, basically 40,000 years ago, you could fuck that girl, but then you leave her with a kid for like 18 years. She doesn't know that you're going to be there the next day. So she doesn't feel pair bonded to you. So... There's a couple ways to beat this. If you ever run into that, one called the freeze out, which is going to be you making out with her. Most guys, they try to take off the bra. She says no. He's like, oh, come on, baby, come on, baby. He keeps kissing her, trying to turn her on. And she's like, she's just going to back off more. Instead, you do what's counterintuitive is you say, okay. You throw your shirt on, blow up the candle, walk in the other room, check your email, turn on the game. Oh, my God, the Patriots are winning. Fucking love them, you know. So um, then she's gonna she's gonna be kind of sitting there like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> After about five minutes, ten minutes, you're gonna walk back in the bedroom, start making out again, try to pick up the bra again. If it doesn't come up that time, again, blow up the candle. You're gonna you're gonna freeze out on her, right? You guys ever tried something like that? No, not I. <laughs> <laughs> so the other way to beat last minute resistance is to actually spend between four and ten hours with her. Like, of accumulated time. If I meet her and flirt with her at a bar for 15 minutes, that's 15 minutes on our clock. Then I call her on the phone for 20 minutes. I'm now at 35 minutes. We go meet up for some coffee. That's like 45 minutes. Right? So you're going to accumulate this time even through I am, whatever, like, the total accumulation, like, basically on the, using this method, you're going to be fucking that girl between 4 and 10 hours with an average of about 7. So... If you actually spend four to ten hours, then you go for the sex, she's going to know that you're going to be there the next day. Why? Because you've already been with her for like days. So that's three. Okay, I got a question for you. Yeah. You know, I can't say that that's a, that's a problem for me, but it has happened. And is it, is it happening because, you know, the comfort level is not built up? I went to, you know, from A1 just to get her in my bed, back in my house. I didn't spend enough time on the comfort level. She just wants to know that you're going to be there. Not necessarily, not necessarily that she wants you there. She just wants the option that she can have you there the next day if you want. Because have you ever fucked a girl and then you don't even call her the next day and you just bounce? Yeah. No. Right. Actually, no. I don't like one Okay. Because it's always better like the fourth time I bang it versus the first time. Okay. So I do my best never to have a woman say. Okay. So the reason I'm, I'm thinking as you're saying that, I'm thinking is I didn't build up her comfort level. She's not comfortable enough with me to be sucking like that. It's kind of what I'm, and then you're like my favorite term. <laughs> <laughs> the comfort level is not there. It's kind of what I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. Right. So, like, logically what you would do is just kind of back off for a minute, keep running game, and then you're going to try it again, right? Oh, yeah. It'll probably work the second time. She's already up the She might need uh, a little more convincing. Freeze out. So after sex, now it's like, they, they pretty much say that uh, the game is, is until sex. I say like after you fuck her, maintaining the relationship is like when the real game yes, it is. starts. And that's the true test right there. Because if you don't keep your game tight, they're going to bounce. But anyway, after you fuck her, that's when the real fun starts. That's when you can start. Like, then, then you have the choice. Do you want to be in a relationship with this woman? Do you just want her as an LTR, long-term relationship? Do you want an MLTR, multiple long-term relationship, where you're dating her, 
you're fucking hurt, but you're also, uh, that's on Tuesday, and then, you know, Wednesday you have your, your other MLTR, Thursday you got this, so it just matters on you as a man, like, if you can hold the frame, right, because they're going to shit test you, they're going to want you to themselves, they're going to want to be, like, they, they're going to want the power, so if you're just like, look, I'm just having fun, I'm just dating, and you hold that frame, she's going to buy into your frame as long as you're congruent with the way that you say it. But if you kind of like bitch out when you say it, she's going to be calling you up. So simplified into five steps. Basically, uh, this is what you should write down. So instead of memorizing all these like A1, A2, pretty much you meet the girl. Hey, what's up? You lock in. I'm going to talk to you a second. I'm going to demonstrate value. I'm going to bounce her to go get some food. I'm going to pull her back to my apartment. I'm an isolator in the bedroom. So, so when, you're, when you're gaming, it's very much persistence is the key. So say rejection is just in your mind. If you choose to give up and you move on to the next set, it's just game over by your own accord. All that's happening is she hasn't, she still perceives herself as higher value than you and is therefore not feeling any attraction for you. You just need more negs, DHVs in order to flip the power dynamic. So you don't have to ever feel rejection again. It's just like, you walk up, she's not rejecting you. If you walk up and you say hi and she says fuck off, it's not you, it's not Joe, it's not David. It's just that she doesn't, she doesn't know you. She's rejecting your approach, not your personality. She can't, she doesn't know you. This is a mystery micro calibration model. Uh, when you break it down, if you can memorize this model, it's actually coming out of the second book. Uh, if you can calibrate your behavior to kind of follow this model where you demonstrate higher value, hey, I uh, own a nightclub. All you can really do is IOI me or IOD me. You either like it or you don't. So she says, oh, that's cool. And then I can begin compliance testing. It. And she says, like, I'm not impressed. Well, fuck, I'm not impressed with you either. I IOD back and I demonstrate higher value. And I just keep basically plowing till I get to this loop right here. And compliance. Testing starts with uh, a handshake. Does she shake your hand back? All the way to open your legs, baby. So take it all the way. So, 58% of all marriages end before the first uh, five years, and 80% of second marriages fail. So after S3, after sex, you have the option now of pursuing a sexual relationship, but if you don't keep your game tight, the girl's gonna move on to the next challenge. At that point, the sex is gonna discontinue, then the communication will discontinue, in that order. So, I kind of look at the game like uh, I'm a big Zelda fan. So, I know after I always say the princess, it's like, you don't just sit there with the fucking sword up and in the flashing lights, you go to the second quest. So it's kind of like you've got to start again. When I look at this like a, as a metaphor in a way, where, let's say, um, you're with that girl and that's the one you wanted, but you couldn't hold your game tight and she leaves. So you can't sit there and try to chase after it because then you're needy and you're, she's, just, she's going to be more reclusive. To get your girl back, you're going to have to basically dip out for like six months to a year and create a whole new identity. Start making six figures, get a new car, but you don't, you don't even have to do that. Just come back as a whole new person and then you're going to start the game again. Back at A1. Hey, it's been a long time. Open. Then you're going to start demonstrating value to even get her back. But the main thing is, is like, you don't really want to catch one-itis. Have you guys ever heard that term? Um, that's that girl, the one girl that you got to get. You'll never get her. And the paradox behind it is because like, you want her so bad, she knows she has the power. If she has the power over there, she can't feel attraction. So you'll never get her. So this is like the wrong with Angelina Jolie when everybody, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you should have necked her with your lips. <laughs> Um, basically, guys, um, if you feel yourself in that frame, you get like if you start getting tunnel vision and you're just stuck on this girl and you can't get her out of your mind, just we call it um, fuck ten other women, uh, what F T O W, whatever it is. Uh, so you can get her out of your head, but don't worry about it. There's a billion stars in the sky, guys. So just get out there and make it happen. <laughs>